Hi everybody, made it to Lesvos, Greece, the town of Mytilene. I flew in last night, it's early in the morning today. And I'm here on the Olive Grove where Jonathan and Tracy run their community farm. I'll introduce you to Jonathan and he can give us a bit of a tour of the farm. Hey everybody, welcome to the community farm. I'm Jonathan and I'm about to give you the best tour of your life. So you might be wondering what the ropes are. Uh, this is specifically so that we can run varying degrees of shading cloths throughout the growing seasons because during peak summer, we're, we hit about 40, 42 degrees and the pepper plants can't handle that. So we run shading cloth depending on the variety and what they need based on the heat level. So this is where the vegetable portion of our farm slash garden, we've just been experimenting with what ha is traditionally grown locally and what is not grown locally for uh, whatever reason. Um, and so we've got incredible opportunity here in Greece because we have two full growing seasons. So we're able to do a huge um, cross section of vegetables and we've had great success this year. So we've got about 20 different beds going um, and we're just at the end of the second season. And so these are some of the beds. They're just at the end. You can see the corn's done. We've got garlic, we've got beets, we've got kale over here. We've got more kale, we've got fennel, we've got, we've, this year we experimented with about 15 different tomato varieties. These are black tomatoes, which are killer, juicy, just a little bit of tartness with just flashes of pepper, just fantastic. Um, over in the distance, you can just see there's some broccoli and cauliflower going. We've got some more broccoli over here. In the middle, we had about five varieties of radishes going. We've got in the back section there, we started in an asparagus section. You'll see all, I don't know how far into the distance you can see, but we planted just about 4,000 uh, pepper plants. And these are specifically hot peppers, 50 different varieties. Um, all for local hot sauces and stuff like that. So this is just a small section of what we're doing, but we're having great fun. Now what you see here is the end of the very end of a growing season for our micro herb garden. We partnered with some local restaurants, just experimenting with growing some micro herbs. We've got everything from Swiss chard to mustard, to chicory, to celery, to onions. This box here, if you can imagine was the size, it was about this tall and filled the whole thing. And it was basil. Our leaves are about that big. So we had great fun in here. And this is the end of the season. Our uh, melon section, we had incredible success with melons. We still, even here at the end of the season, we got little ones that are still popping out. And then this is exciting. We did an experiment with uh, growing some barley, wheat, and rye. The barley has gone fantastic. We're actually gonna, we're gonna do a, a significant experiment with this next year where we're probably gonna do an acre. Um, and you might be asking why. Well, one of the things that we're doing here is we're exper experimenting with um, a small craft brewery that brews locally produced beer that only uses uh, ingredients grown here on the island. <laughs> Very exciting, so this is fantastic. So where you are standing, well, you might be sitting, but where I am standing is in the middle of our little brew room slash pub here just off the Olive Grove. Uh, this is our brew system. These are some tools that people have sponsored that were brought here very recently by someone you might know. Um, so we get asked lots, why craft brewery? Why are we, why this? When you're working with people and especially working in uh, places where there is unrest, civil conflict, um, depression, political, personal, cultural, et cetera, et cetera. One of the things that we look for is what are the relationship tools that unlock people's ability to sort of connect and build relationships and what we have found locally as in many places, is there's nothing like sitting down and having a beverage with someone in a safe place. It just brings all of the walls down. So this is one of the reasons we chose to do this, as well as 
Nobody else brews uh, craft beer on the island. It just, it's not happening. So this is why we do it. One of the questions that we get asked lots is why are we doing this? One of the things that we have discovered in all of our years of, of working with people and working in humanitarian organizations and for that matter working in uh, churches and with people all over the world is that there is a lack um, of creativity that is bent towards finding new ways of helping people practically uh, and realistically change their lives. So when we moved to Greece specifically to work in the refugee crisis, one of the things we realized very quickly was that there is, there's lots of crisis responders. So first responders for people who are in the immediate crisis now, but there are very few transition responders. So now that people are, are here and in the asylum process, now what? And this is where we decided we felt convinced and convicted that we could step into that gap, providing jobs, growing uh, produce, creating opportunities, uh, being creative in terms of small business startups, helping people begin to build a life. Now, because there's no infrastructure for any of that to work on an island in Greece, and this is a foreign concept, it's just hard, wait for it, tilling the soil mm -hmm. trying to create the avenues where this works and so lots of people ask for well what else are you doing well we're just trying to figure out how to make it work and I say this carefully in a political climate that is geared to make sure it doesn't work 